Hello everyone, my name is Fox. This video is going to be pretty fun. We're going to be talking about AMD's latest FSR3. This is going to be using their frame generation technology. So we're going to be covering that mostly on the INEO Kun, but we're also going to be taking a look and see if we can get AMD's AFMF. This is another type of frame generation, but it happens at the driver level for AMD. Now, this is only going to support DirectX 11 and DirectX 12. Uh, more to the point, it does not yet work on AMD 7840U stuff. I'll take a um, closer look at that, and we're also going to try to see if we can enable AFMF even when we try to export externally to an HDMI card, because that's where we can actually enable integer scaling as well. And typically, integer scaling is disabled for AMD's mobile stuff like 6800U and 7840U on internal displays, but integer scaling is available when you export to an external display for whatever reason. You can hack in integer scaling. Uh, Cypher has done it on his particular bat on the GPU and Max 2 and other devices, so it is possible. And I was hoping that we could still enable it. So unfortunately, we do not have yet AFMF. This is a driver level frame generation technique that would have been possible and would have worked across all DX11 and DX12 games. All Right now, it's a, a preview driver that's available. So there's a subset of games like Starfield and Cyberpunk should have it. Uh, but I'll show you in a moment that that doesn't work. Up first, we're actually going to be taking a look at Amy's FSR3 and see how that actually works on current devices. I will be looking at the INEO Kuhn, which kind of stresses it in a few different ways. Uh, number one, the INEO Kuhn only has 6400 mega transfers uh, RAM. The speed of the RAM is only 6400 MT instead of 7500 MT. So there is a slight performance hit on that in that regard. So it kind of acts a lot like 6800U for all intents and purposes. It does have a very large display, 2560 by 1600. Uh, so it is 16 by 10 with a very high resolution which again, 6800U and 7840U platforms really require uh, not a very high resolution. The Steam Deck's 800p is an ideal sweet spot for resolution to target. So what I have to do is actually uh, force a lower resolution to upscale to that. And then we use FSR on top of that. So we're upscaling twice. Uh, this can bring out some, it can really start drawing out some of the problems or at least exacerbate uh, issues that will be noticeable on these types of devices. If you have a device that has an 800p display, most likely it's going to fare a lot better. But when we go to higher resolutions, when we're trying to put FSR3, you're going to start seeing some artifacting. So we're going to touch base on that. We're going to take a look at Immortals of Avium as well as Forspoken. Let's get into it. Up first, we're going to be taking a look at AMD's FSR3 on the two games that it is currently available for. So this is Immortals of Avium, and we're going to be taking a look at Forspoken in just a moment here. The device I'm looking at is the INEO Kuhn. This is INEO's latest device. It is using AMD's 7840U platform. It is only using 6400 uh, mega transfer RAM instead of 7500 mega transfer, so not perfectly ideal. Very quickly, we'll go ahead and see that I am running at 40 watt TDP. This is one device where you can actually push it pretty high. They'll max out at 54 watt TDP. However, that is not going to directly result in better performance by just pushing wattage. We're pretty much going to have massive diminishing returns after 18 watts anyway. Uh, so we're only going to be able to extract a very, very little performance after 28 watt. But I'm just pushing it to 40 watt just so that people can see this. So you can see right now that I am running at 1280 by 800 and I am actually using FSR. 2 or FSR 3 if you want to say it without frame generation and I do have it on performance so I am running at a fraction of this particular resolution so it is smaller than 1280 by 800 and then being upscaled to that so we're running at a lower resolution uh, for graphics everything was the default which was chosen here which is all pretty much all low here just so that you can see that so without frame generation on, let's take a look at a few different things. And I, a few things that I noticed from the uh, very first intro stage. When we take a look at general movement, as far as I can tell, it really does work very well. The part where things get tripped up a bunch is if we take a look at this particular dot, and I'll try to s slow it down for us when we look uh, on the video later. It kind of stutters in real time that I can see. If I can slow it down, this is without frame generation. Let's go ahead and take a look at this with frame generation enabled. That's pretty much the only artifact that I would say that I immediately saw stand out. Now with frame generation, obviously we're gonna have much smoother frame rates here, but you can see that a dot that is going to be in the same consistent spot seems to be at least one uh, weakness of frame generation. However, Everything else feels really good. Even though we have to have VSync on for FSR3 to actually work, it won't work with VSync off. 
that is its current implementation, which is a bit unfortunate because if you wanted a VRR display with using FSR3, that's not something that you're going to be able to do. However, you can choose to use native AA instead of using other well, FSR's own upscaling technology. So if we go over here in AMD FSR3, you can actually choose to do the native AA and still keep frame generation on which is a neat little thing because with native AA, we're not going to have the same type of artifacting that will be present on FSR. Some of the types of uh, fringing artifacts that you can notice on FSR. Now FSR continually gets updated and, you know, might get better as time goes on. So you can actually use native AA to avoid the common FSR upscaling artifacts and still use frame generation, which is a nice part of FSR3. But I really do recommend you still use especially on low-end devices. This is a handheld device. Even though we're pushing 40 watt, again, going over 28 watt is really not going to help us all that much here. When we're at performance with frame generation on, it actually does a reasonably good job to feel good. And with the controller, it's not that terrible, All to be honest. Typically, V-Sync on feels atrocious to use, and this doesn't feel as bad. But we are using AMD's Anti-Lag Plus on the back end side on the Radeon control panel. So this is compensating a bit. But yeah, like I said, the only thing that we're really noticing, that I'm noticing here, is that stutter that happens on that dot. Let's go ahead and take a look at Forspoken 3. All right, so here we are taking a look at Forspoken. Now I am running 800p. This is native AA as my upscaling method right now, but you can see that we're getting around 36 FPS here. But overall, the image quality remains consistent as we pan around. The one thing that is interesting in this particular game is that when we use native AA with frame generation, we can really highlight the artifacting that's going on. Not so much even just like FSR2 artifacting, but like FSR3 artifacting. And you're going to notice it where it gets onto the rock edges here. So I'm going to try to enable it right now with native AA. It's actually preferred to do... Uh, to do it with FSR instead of native AA, but we're going to go ahead and enable this right now. So now you can see that we've got up to 60 FPS, so everything should be much nicer, and it does actually feel nicer. However, you can really easily see what's going on in the background over here. Take a look what's going on with the edges of the rocks right there. So when you're panning around here, it just looks like this weird mess when you're looking around. It's not as bad when we use uh, FSR itself, so I'll go ahead and enable FSR. Okay, so now this is FSR itself. We have frame generation on, so right now it's set to quality. And if we move around, you can see that we still have shimmering along the edges, but it is not as pronounced as the native AA solution with frame generation on. However, we do have a much smoother gameplay experience. Overall, I am actually really impressed with FSR 3. Uh, I think that the problem is, is that when we are challenging the game with having very little resources, that we're really exacerbating any type of issue that is going to be showed up on display itself. However, one of the benefits here is that you could go ahead and make this like ultra performance, which is not going to look super great in terms of image quality. However, what we're going to be able to do is let's go ahead and bump our TDP way down. So now at like 20 watt TDP, we're still getting 60 FPS here. Now you can still see the fringing that's going on with that very high upscaling method. It looks really bad right here. So there does still need to be work done on FSR3's implementation, especially on these very extreme examples, right? Because we're running at a sub-resolution and then another sub-resolution and then upscaling that. So effectively, again, let's take a look at the resolution that I'm running at here. So you can see I'm running at 1280 by 800, and then I'm also applying upscaling to that. And so we're upscaling twice effectively, and also constraining things down a whole bunch by limiting the TDP on the device itself. However, you can see that this is... I mean, for what it's doing is really, really impressive. Getting 60 FPS with the image quality that we're getting and having what feels like actually a pretty good experience overall, even with V-Sync on. I don't know. I still remain pretty impressed by it, even though I can clearly see the shortcomings on FSR3. Let's go ahead and start talking about AFMF, which is really going to be pretty short, but let's go ahead and talk about it anyway.
All right, so as we can see here, this is the GPD Win Mini. This is another 7840U device. Over here, you can see the drivers that I've installed are 23.30.0.1.02. This is the preview driver that is what's necessary to get AMD's AM, AFMF running on the device. And that is a driver level FSR3, you can think about it. Basically, it's a driver level inserting a frame after every other frame. You do require to have the HyperRX thing, so we're going to have Anti-Lag Plus. But the more important thing here is that you have to go to games and be able to manually select a game. So if we were to go into Cyberpunk, for example, if we were to go down here... So over here, you would actually see that there would be an option for Radeon AFMF. And unfortunately, AFMF is not yet present on the preview driver on 7840U. So at the current moment, there is no way to enable AFMF on 7840U and potentially 6800U as well. It seems like it is currently excluded from mobile uh, devices, much like integer scaling is excluded from mobile devices, where only on the internal display. If we were to go to an external display, it would work. Actually, that is a good point. All right, so what I was hoping here to do was, right now I am exporting the GPD Win Mini out through HDMI, and I've turned off the internal display, so we are exporting via HDMI only at the moment. Now, what you can see here is that integer scaling becomes available on 6800U and 7840U, you, you can actually enable integer scaling when you export to an external display. However, it is not present at all on the internal display. It needs to be hacked to be able to get integer scaling working. That's something that Cypher does. So I was hoping that if integer scaling is hidden away because we have to export to an external display, what I was hoping was that we could then go into games over here and see if we could see AFMF uh, but it doesn't look like that is the case. We do not have it available to us, even when we export to an external display, which is unfortunate. So, again, if you want integer scaling on 6800U or 7840U or any uh, AMD APU for their mobile stuff, they, for whatever reason, disable integer scaling, even though it would be great to have on the internal display. Uh, it can be hacked to do so, uh, but... Uh, typically you're only going to be able to access integer scaling via exporting to an external display. I just want to double check some other games here and make sure that we don't see integer scaling is there. Radeon Shield, no. You should see AMD, AFMF, uh, and we do not. So that is unfortunate. So that is pretty much the case for this particular video we took a look at fsr3 on the two games that has available i personally think it's a really cool solution especially for low power devices i think it still needs a little bit more to go especially when we took a look at uh, using native aa as opposed to using fsr uh, also its requirement to use vsync is um kind of not awesome uh it would be better if we could get around that however having it need vsync on portable devices might actually be a better case because most portable devices don't have VRR. Uh, so in so far as from our worldview, it's not so bad. Hopefully as the FSR3 implementation keeps on going along like FSR 3.1 or 3.2, we hope to see that this actually improves. But this is what FSR3 and AFMF look like on AMD's low power mobile uh, types of platforms. I hope this was informative as always guys. Thank you for your time. And thanks for watching.